Hi, I'm Chelsea, and today I'm going to be teaching you about spot color photography, and not just the Photoshop part, but the actual theory behind it. I see a ton of spot color pictures in our group, and a lot of people figured out how to do it in their photo editing software, but don't really know how to make it make their picture appealing. So I'm gonna go into the theory, but first I wanna to get to the fun part, which is the Photoshop part. So let's get that out of the way. So a lot of people use the sponge tool over here and then they can choose saturate or desaturate, but I think it's a lot faster to just select the hue and saturation adjustment and lower the saturation on your entire picture. Then click the mask right here. So make sure you have black selected and then your paintbrush, your brush tool. And then you can just color back in the color. So you wanna to try to be pretty precise. Don't be sloppy. I've see, I see some people doing that, some sloppy ones. Unacceptable. So if you are sloppy, you can zoom in. And instead of black, make sure white is selected and you can touch up. I'm using my left bracket to make my brush smaller. You can touch up where you uh, maybe selected some things that you should not have. Okay, and then I missed some spots, so I'll go back to black and get these corners here. Oh boy, now I'm being sloppy. Okay, and it's that easy. It's very simple. Now let's get to the theory part, which is a lot more difficult. So you're probably thinking spot color theory, that's not a thing. Probably isn't because I couldn't find anyone else on the internet talking about ways to do spot color other than just the Photoshop methods. It's a lot more difficult than that. That's the reason why I think it comes out so bad most of the time. A lot of people will take a picture that had no focal point and just make one thing color and think that that does it. In fact, you should know all about composition, um, leading lines, the rule of space. And if you don't know about those things, you shouldn't even be attempting spot color. If you need to know those things, Luckily, I know a pretty hot guy that wrote a book, Stunning Digital Photography, and we have a whole chapter on composition. And if you're illiterate, we also have a DVD and Blu-ray series. So Tony's laughing at me because probably doesn't think I should be calling people illiterate. All right, so I think it's easier to just show you what I mean. So now that you're an expert on composition, let me show you some pictures and show you what not to do. So let's switch to this owl picture. So it's a pretty nice picture. We have a beautiful owl. There are some distracting elements here, like this twig, and the background is not great. I see a lot of the time people will take a picture like this and apply spot color to the eyes and think that that solves all of the problems of the distractions in the picture. So let's do that. Let's be that person. I'm gonna lower my saturation, click on this mask here, Make sure that my black is selected and then color in the eyes. Okay, so the eyes are more prominent. That doesn't fix any other problem. We still have a pretty mediocre picture on our hands. Now it just has yellow eyes in it. Instead of that, you should be working on your cropping first. So this is a very similar picture to the one that you just saw, but all of the distractions are cropped out of it. And now the main subject of the picture is the owl's eyes. I didn't need to rely on spot color for that. I used composition and I understand photography just a little bit. So I was able to overcome those problems by just cropping and zooming in. If you still have your heart set on spot color, you crazy animal, that's still a possibility. So let's try it. I selected the hue and saturation again, and I'm gonna lower my saturation, click on my mask, and color in this little guy's eyes. He is so cute. He was really little. He was about the size of my hand. Okay. I think that this is better than the first one, but that it's still a little bit cheesy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into the hue and saturation here, and I'm gonna bring up the saturation just a little bit. So the eyes are still the brightest thing in the photo, but it's not really technically spot color, which I prefer. Okay, we can make it even more spot color if you want by going back to this mask and selecting white and then taking all of the color out of the background. That didn't look fully black and white, but it is. I'm imagining color. 
let's move on here. Here's another common mistake that I see. People will take a perfectly good portrait and they want to do some spot color because that's like crazy and fun, right? So they pick a part of the photo that is not the subject at all. Here, I think that my daughter, her eyes are the thing that's the subject of this photo. But I'll see this happen a lot where people will decide they want to highlight the person's lips. And that just makes no sense. Don't do that. I did a really messy job, but even if I didn't, it would look bad. Don't, please don't do that. Or they'll do a flower in the hair or something if she had a little flower bread. Don't, that's not the subject. You didn't take a picture of your child because of the flower in their hair or the color of their lips. You want to see them. So don't spot color strange things on your kids or your friends or anything. I see a lot of wedding pictures where just the corsages are spot colored. That's, that's crazy. I don't recommend that at all. Let's get rid of this. Let me undo this. In some instances, it's just better not to use spot color at all. When in doubt, just don't use it. So let's get the saturation back up to normal here and we'll move on to another photo. So along the same line, I see a lot of pictures where the subject of the picture or the actual focal point is not the thing that people put in spot color. So let me show you what I mean with this gorgeous piece of tuna cooked by our friend Chris Rao. He's also a photographer. He's like multi-talented, pretty cool. I hang with a cool crowd. So let's see, we'll go to this mask layer. I have my brush selected. I have it on black so that it shows color. And I'll see something like this, which just makes me bananas. And people in the group know it and they laugh about it and then they do it. And guys, you're really, you're crushing me. This, so do something like that. Please don't do that and this is why. The entire composition of this picture is set up to highlight the food. And food also should almost always be in color and you're just distracting from your subject when you take something in the background like a flower, which is really inconsequential to the story of the picture, and you put it in spot color. That's just bad, bad, bad. I don't respect that. Let me show you another example of that, just because it's kind of fun. It's pretty fun. Maybe you think you want to show off the wine. You're wrong for showing off the wine, because it's still not the subject of the photo. If you wanted it to be the subject, you should have cropped the picture or zoomed in or found an interesting way to show off the wine. So spot color is not going to fix that. So let's get rid of that. And lastly, let's try to make the food the subject of the picture with some spot color. Being a little messy here. So that looks better. I can't say that the spot color version of this picture is my favorite, but I think that it's pretty good. I think that there's already a subject in this picture, that the composition was overall already there, and then adding spot color just kind of added my own twist to it. So I would say again, I did this to another photo. I don't like complete spot color. I might bring up the saturation of the whole photo just a little bit. Some people might think that's even cheesier, and I wouldn't blame you if you said that but I think it just lessens the offense of the spot color. I wanna go back to the original photo that I showed you and tell you why I picked this picture as a good example. First, let me undo the spot color. So in this original picture, the composition is decent. I mean, this isn't the best picture I've ever taken, but I thought it was a good example to show you with spot color because there's this old rusty car, which I really loved. Then there's a rustic barn behind it and it's a similar tone, and it kind of steals the car's thunder. It's a bit distracting. Aside from the background being a little bit distracting, we have this bright blue sky and this green, green grass, and there's a lot of visual weight in bright colors, which means it can kind of throw off the balance of the picture. In order to get our attention away from this blue sky and the green, green grass, we can put the picture in black and white, which I think looks nicer. You start to see the grittiness of the car, it draws your attention to the lines in the picture. But the tones of the car in the background are st still similar, so it doesn't pop from the background, which is why I thought it was a good opportunity to use spot color. Is spot color my favorite now? No, still not. But 
there are ways to do it so that it's not cheesy. You saw how it looked before. So now that I've added some spot color into the picture, you can see that we don't have the visual distraction of the blue sky and the green grass. We still have all the textures, textures that we want. Um, and our attention is really drawn to the car and is not distracted by the background either. So I thought that that was a good example. So all in all, I think that's pretty simple. You don't want to use spot color to replace the basic rules of photography. So you want to know about composition and some other little compositional tips. Um, you can use spot color if everything's already there in the picture, it's well composed, the exposure's right, it looks good, and you're just experimenting and want some pop. All in all, as you can probably tell, I'm not a huge fan of spot color. I think of it as kind of the laugh track in a sitcom. If the jokes were really funny, you don't need the cue of an audience's laughter to tell you. And that's kind of what I think of with spot color. If the picture's already there and it's a great picture, you don't need something as aggressive as spot color to point that out to your viewer. You can just leave it up to their interpretation. But I have seen spot color that I really liked. And I think that if people are a little bit more educated on spot color, there'd be a lot more good spot color out there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the DVD series if you're illiterate or our book if you're just a person that values education and being smart. And if you um, respect yourself as a human, you might want to check it out. So thank you.